Hoops are great fun to play with. Not only do children enjoy them, but adults as well. Do they have any use during cataract surgery? Let's look at three situations. A zonular dehiscence, a subluxated lens, and a traumatic cataract. Designers have used hoops to create and maintain form. As surgeons, we can use hoops to maintain the form of the capsule bag in situations where zonular integrity has been compromised. In this particular case, the zonular dehiscence was not noted until the end of fake emulsification. The capsular bag was filled with a viscoelastic to restore the shape of the capsular bag, and the endocapsular tension ring is expected to maintain the shape of the capsular bag and the position of the intraocular lens. You can see here the viscoelastic filling the bag and recreating the shape of the bag. You can see how easily the endocapsular ring slips through the incision and the capsular rexus and starts rotating around, even in this area of loose zonules, to completely encircle the capsular bag. As you can see here that the advancing end of the loop is pushing in the area of weakened zonules, but this is ideal because then the tension of the capsule is against the normal zonules, and we do not compromise the area of weakened zonules. Once the loop is in place, the intraocular lens is placed in the bag, the viscoelastic removed, and you will find that these lenses then center very well with no evidence of the previous zonular dialysis. The vitrector is used to again check for any herniating vitreous, and the pupil is constricted. In a pig eye, we have shown collapse of the capsular bag where zonules were broken in the yellow area, whereas the bag is still circular in the area of the red arrow. We have seen clinical situations where the capsule completely collapses and contracts around the implant. And we expect the endocapsular ring to prevent this contracture and ripping off of additional zonules. There are a number of indications that surgery that the zonules may be weakened. Movement of the lens during capsular rexus, hydrodissection, fake emulsification. If there's some bulging of the iris or frank vitreous herniation around the lens, or decentration of the crystalline lens. Certainly a history of trauma should make one suspicious of loose zonules. In this traumatic cataract, you can see the lens is decentered inferiorly and moves excessively with attempted puncture of the anterior capsule. So a sharp instrument was used to start the capsule rexus. It was completed without difficulty. And in this situation, we are threading the endocapsular ring through a paracentesis, again, to be pushing toward the area of zonular dehiscence. And you note the ring is being placed before fake emulsification to stabilize the capsular bag and to prevent any further uh, zonular dehiscence just from the stress of the surgery. And note that when the loop is entirely within the capsular bag that the lens again is centered and fake emulsification can proceed without difficulty. Capsule bag is expanded with a viscoelastic, and the lens is placed, and you can note it centers perfectly. One manufacturer supplies an injector for the endocapsular tension ring. The loop is 
grasped with a hook that's pulled back into the cannula, threading the loop into the cannula for easy insertion into the eye, and just then expressing it and letting it snake around the capsular bag. You'll note that as it comes out of the cannula, the loop will show the engagement with a hook at the end that is now being released. This facilitates placement of the loop in the capsular bag. In this case, we're demonstrating the use of a plate haptic in trocular lens. It's been reported that with capsular bag contraction and the tension on these lenses, at the times after YAG laser capsulotomy, they will uh, be expressed into the vitreous, and one would expect that the endocapsular ring will neutralize this contracting force and make these lenses safe in every situation. We're using an endoscopic camera here to demonstrate that the edge of the lens and the sides is well away from the endocapsular ring. And the capsular bag will maintain its circular shape. The last case is a, another traumatic cataract. In this case, with the neurodialysis that allows us to visualize the endocapsular tension ring and the lens loop at the edge of the capsule through the iridodialysis. Again, this loop was placed before the cataract was removed, and it was placed with a lens positioning hook. With the ring in place and viscoelastic in the capsular bag, the lens is placed, and one can see through the iridodialysis not only the loop of the intraocular lens, but you see the ends of the endocapsular tension ring now overlapping each other, appearing as one loop when the bag is expanded with the viscoelastic. As the viscoelastic is removed and the capsular bag flattens, the circumference is increased and now the ends of the endocapsular tension ring are separated and just touching. So this is clinical evidence that the capsule without the cataract in it has a larger diameter than when the cataract is in place. We're reporting on our first year's experience using the endocapsular ring, utilizing it 14 times in, in 13 months for a number of different situations of dialysis, just loose sonules, and actual subluxation. We've used the larger ring in 57% of the cases. All of the lenses are well centered in the bag and have maintained that centration with up to 12 months follow-up. Contraindications to the tension ring are anterior or posterior capsule tears. Complications have not been experienced or reported to date. In summary, the capsular tension ring maintains the natural shape of the capsular bag, retards capsular fibrosis, prevents luxation of the intraocular lens, it stabilizes the capsule when there's an area of missing or loose sonules. If used routinely, it would stabilize the capsule in high myopia, would reduce or prevent the myopic shift that we see in the early postoperative period after lens implantation, and prevent the anterior capsulorexis ring contracture from fibrosis. While children are having fun with their hula hoops, surgeons can derive a lot of pleasure from successfully managing the difficult situation of zonular dialysis during cataract surgery.